Hey guys, it's Andrew with the Avalon Legacy again. Um, I decided to do some binder collection videos, um, progress videos. Um, I, it's been a long time since I've shown my binders and my collection in a video, um, in videos. So um, definitely thought, you know, coming back to YouTube was a good time to do that. Um, so my number one collection goal uh, for Pokemon cards is uh, to collect every shiny Pokemon card ever made. Um, I define that in a very specific way because I don't collect first editions. Um, I just want, like, one of each shiny Pokemon that they've made, um, along with, like, special English variants. You'll see what I mean by that later. So, these are the three binders I have so far. Um, you know, I have them all spaced out for what I'm missing. There's currently 419, uh, from what I've calculated in a Google Doc. I have a Google Doc like that has a list of all the ones, all the Pokemon, shiny Pokemon that have been made. Um, so I have like 316, I think. So I'm missing like a little over 100, most of which are from Shining Fates. I didn't pull too many of those. Um, so I just got to get a lot of those. I have most of the big ones out of the way, as you'll see in these binders. So we'll just start going through the first one. Uh, number two, number three. Okay. So first one here. Make sure I sent the list right. Okay. So right off the bat, you know, you see the first two Shinings ever made. Shining Magikarp. Um, fittingly, it was the first Shining I ever pulled. Uh, it's first edition there, as you can see. Uh, I pulled it, obviously, from Neo Revelation. And um, I was just, like, enamored with it. You know, I was like, oh, my God, they're making Shiny Pokemon cards. Um, you know, it just looked... It was just so cool to see, like, them making them... Uh, in the card game, and then Shining Gyarados, of course. Um, I actually want to switch the order of these. Because <laughs> Magikarp was technically the first one. I know it's numbered 66 in this set, which is kind of weird how they did that, decided to do that, but in Japanese, it was the first Shining they ever made. Um, and it's regarded as such. You know, there's the University Carp in Japanese, which is my holy grail. Uh, one day I hope to own that. Um, I wish I got it when it was cheaper, but, you know, what can you do? Um, and then in Celebrations, obviously, they made the remake of it with the 25th stamp and everything, so that was the first shiny they ever made, um, and then obviously Gyarados was released in the same set, so some people consider that the first. Um, and then these two I want to talk about because they're from the Versus set, and, um, when I first pulled this card back when they sold, uh, Japanese packs in the mall, and, you know, most more commonly in America, um, I pulled this and I was like, that's clearly not... Espeon's regular color, so I don't know if the artist decided to do it like that, or Pokemon Company made them do it that way, uh, purposefully, but it's definitely shiny. It's green, and it has the shiny eye color of Espeon's shiny sprite, so it's definitely shiny. Uh, the Delibird is a little more hard to notice. Um, the beak color is pretty similar to the shiny Delibird sprite in gold and silver, and it's clearly pink instead of red. Um, that's by Mitsuhiro Arita. I would love to meet him and ask him if he intentionally drew that shiny or not, if I ever meet him in the future. Um, but I put them there because they're, they fill in the space nicely, and they're definitely, I mean, in the case of the Espeon, Espeon's definitely shiny. Delibird's a little more, you know, like, you could argue it's not, but I consider both of them shiny. So, moving on, we have the shinies from Neo Destiny, of course. Um, Shining Steelix is my favorite of all of them. Um, Raichu close second. And then, maybe Celebi or Kabutops. Uh, the Kabutops I actually pulled myself. It's the only shining, uh, from Neo Destiny that I pulled myself. And um, I love that, obviously, first edition, as you can see. So I pulled both Shinings from Revelation and Neo Destiny as they were just coming out, which was awesome. Uh, so that really kick-started my obsession. Like, I need to get all these. I want all the Shinings uh, that they've ever made. So there's that. Um, the Tyranitar and the Mewtwo I got from my friend Noah um, way back in the day, like 15 years ago, probably. <laughs> like, um, he traded those to me. And uh, the shiny Charizard I actually bought on Amazon for 25 bucks, if you can believe that. It was a little warped on the top, so I had to, like, flatten it. It's still, you can kind of notice it if you take it out of the sleeve, but we're going to keep it in the sleeve. <laughs> and moving on, of course, my favorite card of all time, the Shining Mew, Koro Koro. I wish this came out in English, um, but it's just as beautiful in Japanese, obviously. And moving into the Gold Stars, the most legendary, like, <laughs> infamous, I should say. Uh, shiny Pokemon. Um, we got the Mew, of course, and then the World Championships, the four World Championship 
version. So as you can see, I count those. Um, I don't count first editions. For my personal collection, I understand if people do for theirs, but um, because they're so different and they're limited edition, quote unquote. Um, this one's from, I think, 2008 World Championships. Yep. And this was 2005, now six. Gladius. And then there's two variations of Jolteon. One was, uh, I can't remember this guy's name, 2007. And then this was Jason Klazinski in 2008, right? Yeah. So there's all those. And they're awesome because they're non-hollow, which is obviously rare for Gold Stars. And then we got the Celebi and Alakazam down there. I thought Celebi and you next to each other would be a good idea. So then the Latius, you know, flips into, of course, uh, the most expensive ones um, and the rarest. Rarest? Hardest to pull, most expensive. You know, we got the Rayquaza down here. Um, this is one of the three gold stars I pulled myself. This was the first gold star I've ever pulled. Um, Freaking awesome. I pulled it in my, uh, in 11, I think it was, Deoxys packs. I can't remember how much I got, but uh, from my childhood card, card store, Omni. Um, that used to be my hometown. And then these two, of course, the, the grand, the granddaddy of gold stars. Um, I, f <laughs> famously, I want to say famously, but I bought this on eBay for $20 way back. I don't even know how long ago it was, but back when nobody, nobody even batted an eye towards these, <laughs> like back in the day, it's just insane to think about. I wish I like. I could probably dig up the, the listing. Uh, maybe, I don't know if eBay history goes back that far, but the Espeon I actually traded for uh, back when I was first getting into competitive Pokemon. I used to trade with a lot of people, obviously. I traded a... I love telling this story. <laughs> I traded a Full Art Deoxys EX, a Full Art Thunderous EX, because that deck was you know very popular at the time, and my shiny uh, Blastoise from Black and White. Um, and the funny thing is, so I traded for that, and then months later, I traded the same guy back for my original Shiny Blastoise. Uh, he still had it, and I traded back for him other cards. Uh, so I got to keep the Espeon and the Blastoise, which is awesome. So obviously we have all five of the original Evolution Gold Stars, um, which is sick. That's one of my favorite spreads, obviously. Then we have the Trio, so we have the Regis uh, and the Legendary Dogs. Uh, beasts, cats, whatever you want to call them. Um, and then we have the two uh, super ancient Pokemon to go with, you know, to kind of match with the Rayquaza, but also because it just fit well. Um, the Rayquaza and the Raikou. Oh my god. The Registeel and the Raikou are two of the other gold stars I pulled myself. Um, so, the three R's. Yeah, Rayquaza, Raikou, and Registeel I pulled myself. And these are my two favorite of their respective trios. Uh, same thing with her closet, actually. So that's kind of funny that I pulled those myself. Um, so yeah, those are sick, obviously. I mean, they're all sick, let's be real. And then we have more trios. So we have the three starters, obviously the first gold stars ever made. Um, then we have the Holland Phantoms ones. Uh, these two were in the Japanese gift set. And this was in Japanese Holland Phantoms. Then we got both of these Delta species. Um, Charizard, obviously. I got that in... 2018 with my tax return for 150 bucks. Obviously, it's way more expensive now. It's not in the best condition. There's like a crease on the right side. Can't really see it in the binder, luckily. Um, and then Metagross Star was the last one I ever bought. I got it for like $200. Um, uh, it's not in the best condition, but I put off buying it so long. I was just like, okay, just give me the cheapest one. And that was the cheapest one at the time. So, so there we go. Okay, so nine minutes in, we got the SH or yeah sh shinies from diamond and pearl series um these are really cool i i kind of i don't like how they're reverse i wish they just kept the japanese and just had the star foil across the whole card but it's fine um i would say the shinx is my favorite but my favorite is actually the melodic um i don't think i pulled that myself i pulled the relicanth bagon oh, god which other ones did i pull and the voltorb myself the other ones i had to buy or trade for and then we flow in perfectly Melodic and Gyarados next to each other, reverses. I pulled this from my Hercules Soul Silver box that I got from my friend James. And um, I bought the regular hollow. So like this I count as different variants, you know, as you can see. I don't count first editions, but I count other types of variants. So they have the regular hollow and the reverse hollow for the Gyarados and Hercules Soul Silver. 
and then it flows into the SL shinies from Call of Legends. So we got the two, because we were in Gen 4 at the time I started with Gen 4. And then it goes perfectly into the three dogs, both promo and set versions. And then we got the Lugia and the ho -Oh. Obviously, the Lugia is my favorite. Uh, I like the Deoxys a lot, too. Deoxys and Lugia kind of compete, but this was the first shiny Lugia card they ever made, and I was so happy they made that. And you got the Ho-Oh down there. And then we go into more. So then we have all four of the Gen 3 Legendaries on one page, which is awesome. And then the Rayquaza flows into the black and white Rayquaza, uh, which is obviously very expensive. Um, this is the Japanese exclusive from uh, Nobunaga's Ambition X Pokemon. Um, in English, it was called Pokemon Conquest. That's one of my favorites. That one's so sick. It has the shadow of Nobunaga in the background. Um, same artist as this one. So five bond graphics, they just reuse the same model and pose it differently, which is funny. Um, and then we have, so this is another fun variant, two Zoroark from Next Destiny. So I don't know if you could tell from just looking at it top down like that. But this is the regular version, and this is the error version. So if you can't tell, in the top, the evolution boxes, or evolution, uh, whatever, there's three which is normally on stage twos, but this is a stage one. So it's supposed to only have two swishes or whatever you want to call them, but this one has three. So this is the error version. Um, I think this is the more common version, if I remember right. Um, this, it was corrected on later prints. Is it the opposite? I can't remember. I think this was first print and this was later print. So there's that. That's always a fun one. Most people don't even know about that. Um, and then we go into more black and white shinies. So this is, you know, when they first started making black and white shinies, they were just, there was no gold involved. They were just, you know, they had the energy symbol and the texture, but, um, they didn't start doing gold until you'll see in a second. Um, the shiny high dragon is my favorite. That's my favorite shiny Pokemon ever. Um, so I was so happy when they made a card of that pretty much right away. Um, Reuniclus is also one of my favorite Pokemon. Gardevoir, obviously one of my favorite Pokemon, and I'm still just... I'm really mad they just never made a Shining Gallade yet. Um, they could have easily done it for a Radiant Gallade, but they did Gardevoir. Again, it's fine. <laughs> I'm just still waiting. Um, you know. And then we go into the Golds. Um, I have a full page of the Psychic types. Um, Sigilith is actually my favorite of all the Gold Shinies. Um, uh, tied with Blastoise, I'll say. I love the Blastoise. Um, so we have the Charizard, obviously. The Charizard has the fighting type symbol. I still can't believe all these years later they still have errors like that popping up. Um, and they never corrected this one, which I'm glad because I don't want to have to buy another one. <laughs> um, so that just has that fighting energy forever, which is hilarious. And then we continue with the gold Chinese on there. Um, it's kind of hilarious they made a Garchomp, but that deck was very popular at the time, so... Um, one of the worst Chinese. <laughs> um, and then we got both Genesect. Um, I actually... This one's pretty expensive. I actually found it in uh, the DVD of Genesect and the Legend Awakened on a vacation in Georgia. And I just bought it. And I was like, I hear something moving around in there. And it's, I took the gamble. It was only $10 or whatever. And I got it. And I was so happy. Um, and then we got the going into the XY Shinies. Um, this I want to talk about because this is actually really miscut or off-center, I should say. But there is a little bit of the other one on the bottom. You can kind of see... Well, you might be able to see how it connects right there. Eh. Yep, which is awesome. I love that. Um, so I have that in there. And then full arts are next. Yeah. So these are the ones from Ancient Origins. Um, those are so beautiful. They used to be so cheap. I got, um, I didn't pull any of them myself, unfortunately. I had to, I traded for... No, I think I just bought them all, but I got them all for, like, less than 20 bucks or something. Um, so that was good. And then these two, uh, these came in the tins in English, which is awesome, but in Japanese, they're, like, some of the most expensive cards ever made. They were in, like, the Japanese, uh, Dream Shine collection or whatever it was called, and they were, like, the ports were insane. They're going for, like, $300, $400, I think, right now. So I'm glad we got those in English in, uh, really cheap tins. That's awesome. Um, and then we have this, uh, Gardevoir, also really expensive in Japanese, not very expensive in English. Um... Also mad they didn't just make it like Mega Gallade or even, even it could have just been Mega Gardevoir but with a Gallade, but, uh, but it's just two Gardevoir for some reason. Like, it's fine. I understand Gardevoir's popular, but my boy needs some love once in a while. Um, yeah. 
And then we have <laughs> the Gyarados page. Um, when they made Breakpoint, obviously, it was a Shiny Gyarados instead of regular. Um, I love this card. That's one of my favorites, obviously. My Mewtwo Rita. The original alternate arts, I like to call them. Um, and then this Shiny Magikarp is also really uh, expensive in Japanese. Um, luckily, we got it as like a Toys R Us kind of promo. So those are cool. Um, then these, a lot of people don't like Steam Siege, um, but I love Steam Siege because they were shinies. Uh, so I have the re hollow reverse of all of them, plus they made Cosmos foil of Shiftry and Bisharp, and these are still sealed in their packs. Um, they came in those like knockout collection things. Um, and then we have all those, and I have <laughs> Volcarona has the most because they did the first, second, third, and fourth place of the reverse of those. So I have all of those. Because uh, I'm crazy. Uh, <laughs> so this it works out perfectly. You know, how the, this binder worked out. I'm very happy with how everything flows. Um, so we have the full art uh, EXs. The shiny Mega Gardevoir, shiny Mega Steelix in their regular versions. Um, the Sky Tree Japanese exclusive Rayquaza. And this one. I love this card. This features a musician who... He sang the ending or opening to one of the XY anime songs in Japanese, and I actually found this in Japan. I remember that you could not find this listed online anywhere back in the day, and I found it in my 2017 trip to Japan, um, sealed in the, like, CD it came in. It came in, like, a CD soundtrack, like, box set, and I found it, and I was so happy. It was, like, 3,000 yen or something, which is, like, 20-something dollars, 25-ish dollars at the time. So that's one of my favorites. That's awesome. And then we go into the Sun and Moon Shinies. Um, there's that Tapu Koko promo that didn't come out until Celestial Storm Blisters. And it came out so early in Japan. It came out, like, early 2017 in Japan. It didn't come out until Celestial Storm in English. Um, and then we start the, obviously, Shining Legends Shinies with Rayquaza. And we got the whole spread here. You know, we got Shining Mew, my favorite, of course. Um, and then we have all the rest of them. Um, I'm really sad they made Shining Jirachi as a, as a psychic type. It would have been nice to have more variety and make it a steel type. But it's fine. At least it matches with you, I guess. Um, yeah, I'm uh, I'm really excited because Hitoshi Riga is coming to freaking Hartford Regionals. And he's my second favorite Pokemon TCG artist and one of my favorite artists of all time. So I'm trying to debate what to get sealed by him. I think I might go with the Shiny Lugia. Um, because Shiny Lugia is my second favorite Shining uh, after Hedragon. And um, I think I'm going to buy the Japanese version and have him sign that. Um, I'm just so excited, like, I can't believe they got him to come to Hartford, that's just so exciting. Um, so yeah, moving on, yeah, we have all those, he illustrated the Genesect and the Ho-Oh and the Volcanion. Yes, yeah, all four of those he illustrated, which is awesome. Oh, I want to talk about this, actually. So this Shining Genesect, the way he illustrated it, actually ties way back to the Kabutops, so, similar, standing on rock with the sun in the background. This one's more at sunset. This is, like, in the morning, uh, it seems. So, that kind of low-key confirms that um, Genesect was a Kaputops uh, before Team Plasma altered it. Um, so, yeah, I, I love that card. I kind of want to get this signed by him. I have a Japanese one, actually. So, I was debating getting that signed by him, but I think I want to go with the Lugia. Um, just because Lugia is my second favorite Shining, so it's very... Plus Lugia is still one of my favorite Pokemon of all time, so... And then we go into some... Starting to go into Hidden Fates, um, because they made this shiny Salvali promo. So I just decided, you know, they at first they made the regular GXs, then they made the full GXs in Hidden Fates. So I like to match I match those up. Um, and then Naganautil... Oh, this Japanese exclusive Poi Pool, which is awesome. So this parallels this, this parallels this, this parallels this, you know. So that worked out really nicely. Uh, so Valley's actually my favorite Sun and Moon Pokemon, so I'm very glad they made three shiny cards of him. It's very awesome. And then Darkrai and Zygarde, I put them in this binder because they had regular GX versions that were shiny. And then they got their Full Arts and Hidden Face, which none of the other ones did besides Savali. So that's binder number one. <laughs> 20 minutes in. That's fine. That's the biggest one. So we'll go into binder number two. So this continues Hidden Fates. You know, this is where the bulk of Hidden Fates is. So we start off with these four legendary ones that don't really match with any of the other ones. Um, I'm sad they made only Reshiram and not Zekrom. Uh, my boy Zekrom getting 
shafted there. Um, and their claws is actually getting pretty expensive, which is crazy because those were everywhere. Um, I think when Hidden Fates first came out. Then we got the Ultra Beasts, which I, uh, I'm i obsessed with them. I love Ultra Beasts. They're so sick. I wish they did a full or shiny of all of them, but they didn't do Celesteel, unfortunately, which is my favorite. And they didn't do Faramosa either, um, which they weren't very pop uh, playable. So I understand. Like, these three were pretty pop. I mean, these two were pretty popular, but they just made those other, the other ones for why not. Uh, luckily, they made one. I don't know. They didn't make a Baby Nihil Ego. That's right. Damn. So close. Um, Celesteel is my favorite, and I, I love it. Um, they didn't make Blissophilon either, because it came out right before this set came out. Hidden Fates. Um, so yeah, so we'll keep going. Uh, Noibet is one of my favorite Shinies of all time, uh, as well, so I'm glad they made that. I, I love Noiver, and he's one of my favorite Pokemon, but the Shiny, I don't like his Shiny as much as Noibet, unfortunately. And, uh, Glissopod's awesome, of course. Um, and then the Evolutions, I'm still missing... Sylveon, unfortunately, I gotta buy that soon. <laughs> I've been putting off completing Hidden Fates for so long. Um, obviously, I'm still missing that. Nihiligo as well. Um, so then we got all those. I pulled, hilariously, I pulled four Glaceon uh, during my run of Hidden Fates. And I finally pulled the Umbreon. So these are the only two I pulled myself. Finally pulled the Umbreon in the reprint tins. The first reprint they did, I bought three tins and they, I pulled the Umbreon. I was very happy. Um, so that's, that was sick. And we got that freaking Shining Charizard. I, I paid stupid amount for that back when there was, like, no listings on TCG Player. Then they did another reprint, like, right after I bought it, of course. So now he's, like, way cheaper, and I just regret paying, like, full price for him. Um, so there's that. I'm still missing the Charmander. Um, so we'll go here. And Decidueye, freaking awesome. Gardevoir, awesome. Um, the Rowlet's adorable, of course. And then Metagross, Altaria, Lines. I'm still missing Wooper. Those are the only four I'm missing from Shiny Fates, or Hidden Fates. And we got both Lycanroc, Lucario, Baby, and GX. And Malamar there. And then we got all four of these guys. We got a nice, you know, double Gen 1, Gen 2, Gen 3. So those worked out nice. And we got these guys, more baby. This is the end of the baby shinies. Uh, I love the Magnezone. Magnezone's one of my favorite Pokemon. Seviper is nice, too. I love Seviper. He's really cool. I like how they did that. And then we got Shining Fates. So, again, this guy finally bought this. I uh, finally forked that out thanks to my girlfriend giving me, like, a TCG player gift card for a lot. 150 bucks. I was like, okay. Now I can finally buy this card. Um, I, I don't want to go too much into that because I really don't like that card. Uh, <laughs> but anyway, so obviously I'm missing a lot from Shining Fates. Um, I pulled the Ditto myself, which is awesome. That's probably my favorite of all of these. Um, and then, yeah, there's a Lonely Rotom. It's very shiny right here. I don't know why it's doing that. I mean, it's just, it is a shiny collection. <laughs> uh, and then we got the <laughs> remaining... Hidden Fates card. I wanted to put all the Oranguru together, so because he's got three shinies like really close to each other, which is funny. Early Boom, which I pulled myself. Um, Sabol and Drizzle. I pulled both of those myself on release day. Morbidal, Oligos, Dreadnought, um, Bolt Under. Oh my god, the lighting does not like how white they are. <laughs> Colossal. I love that card, it's a great one. Cramorant, Grascuta, Toxtricity, my boy, I love him. Uh, one of my favorite Sword and Shield Pokemon for sure. Uh, he's my favorite Jetting into Max form also. And then send a Scorcher there. And we'll go to binder number three. <coughs> you can see I'm missing a lot in Shining Fates. <laughs> and I sent a Steve Poltegeist. Oops, I skipped some. Very important Hatterene and Zigzagoon. <laughs> And then Obstagoon, unfortunately, had to be on the next page, but. And then what do we got here? Oh my god, I keep skipping pages. Surfetched. Nilsery. Both Phalanx. Be nice. I love Phalanx. He's a great Pokemon. I like how they made fuller and regular shiny of him. Sunjourner. Indeedee. Two of the fossils. Morpeko. 
Inteleon, which is pretty cool. I don't like how they didn't make Cinderace, even though he's the most popular one. Very sad about that. Also, the fact they never made a freaking... They made Single Strike and Rapid Strike Shiny, but never made a Fusion Strike Shiny. They could have easily done the Deoxys, and it would have been awesome, because it would have had all three. Anyway, I digress. Uh, Dragapult, my favorite Gen 8 Pokemon. Got uh, Baby Shiny and VMAX and V. I uh, still don't have the baby, obviously. And a lone Cresselia there. This will be full of the gold uh, shiny full arts. So get all those. And these ones are awesome, obviously. Got the Mew from Celebrations, which I pulled myself on release day, which is awesome. I had to buy the shiny Magikarp, unfortunately. But I did pull the Umbreon Gold Star. That was my chase card. Very happy I pulled that. Oh, I pulled it from a Dragapult box from my friend uh, Cheese. Um, just, that just was awesome. I remember that day so vividly. Um, the Greninja Star from the ETB, which is hilarious that uh, Japan never got this or many of the other promo uh, box promos that we got for celebrations. They just never got them, which is crazy to me. Um, and then I have the World Championships uh, Radiant Greninja from 2022. And then we have all the Radiants. I have every single Radiant, which is nice. Um, I completed those very fast. Um, which they're not expensive, so it's fine. I pulled both Radiant Charizard myself, which I was very happy about because I didn't want to have to buy them because they're the most expensive ones. Um, I got the Charger Bug. I actually got that as an extra from a card I bought from eBay. Someone sent me that as an extra, and it was the last one I needed, which is funny. Um, and we got the rest of them. I think the, yeah, the Steelix or the Jirachi is my favorite. I can't decide. I really like the Steelix because Steelix is one of my favorite Pokemon. Uh, I love Jirachi, too. Um, I'm glad he finally got a shiny that was actually metal type. Um, that card's really nice, but I, um, I think the Steelix is my favorite. I pulled it in Japanese in my Dark Phantasma box, so that was nice. Um, I'm glad they actually made a, sh a shiny, uh, dragon type, and it was a Eternatus. That's his only baby, only non-two-prize card that exists, so that's kind of funny. All right, and that's everything so far. That's the 419th shiny. Um, well, technically the Zacian and Zamazenta promos from the Crown Zenith boxes will be the last two, uh, 418 and 419. Um, so yeah, let me know what you guys think. That's my entire shiny collection, uh, as of the making of this video, obviously. Um, yeah, excited to see what Scarlet and Violet brings to the table. Um, Shiny Treasure is coming out in November in Japan, so we'll probably get that as our specialty set in, what, January, February of next year. Um, so that's probably going to be similar to Shining Fates, where it's going to have every um, Paldean Pokemon, Gen 9 Pokemon, as um, shiny. That's what I'm expecting, anyway. So, yeah, thanks for watching, and see you later.